Olivia Reiner, you're on with John. Go ahead. Hi, John. When did this uh, opportunity to join the Flyers as an advisor first come on your radar? And then why was it enticing for you? Um, well, it first came about when um, when Keith Jones got the job as president. Uh, I just text Jonesy, uh, congratulate him. I thought he was the best person for the job. I thought, uh, you know, it was a great choice and really happy for him. And I just said, you know, if you need anything, uh, I'm available. would love to uh, be a part of it. And, uh, you know, I heard back from him. Just thanks a lot. Appreciate it, buddy. And then uh, a little bit later, he's like, I uh, definitely want to talk to you. Uh, I think there could be a great fit here. Uh, we had a great conversation. And, um, you know, to be able to be a part of, uh, you know, what's going on uh, with the future, <clears throat> the vision of Danny and, and Jonesy, um, it was something very exciting. I was very excited to be a part of and. Uh, very happy, uh, you know, to be here now. Follow up, Olivia. Yeah. So the press release talked about how you'll be working in kind of a, a player development capacity. What are your primary responsibilities in your role? Um, you know, from talking to everybody, I think it's going to be a little of everything. Uh, just I'm going to be another voice. Uh, it's going to be everything from uh, watching games, practices, uh, you know, checking on prospects uh, and checking on our prospects in, uh, you know, down in the Phantoms. So uh, it's going to be a, a lot of things. Uh, I'm going to be another voice, another set of eyes, uh, the way they explain it. Um, and it's it's going to be great. Uh, I'll be around, uh, you know, the whole organization and be, be involved in, in a lot of different uh, aspects of it. Adam Kimmelman, you're on with John. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, John. Um, obviously, I know you play with Jones. You have a long relationship with him. Have you started building that similar sort of relationship with Danny and, and Danny Breer? And what is sort of you mentioned, you know, his philosophy and his beliefs? How have you sort of, you know, jived along with that? Well, I, I think the one thing is I think everybody's on the same page as far as, uh, you know, what the goal is um, and, and what uh, how about how we want to go about doing it. Um, so that, that's a that's a real good thing. Um, you know, I think we we. We really mesh well with that part of things. Um, you know, I've known Danny for a while. I don't know him that well, obviously, but um, I've run into Danny many of times and, um, you know, we've got a friendship and, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, obviously hopefully we'll get closer and, and stronger, but uh, Danny was always an easy guy to talk to and uh, just a real smart guy. I always had a lot of respect for him and, um, you know, it's going to be great working with him. Charlie O'Connor, you're on with John, go ahead. Hi, John. Um, over the last few weeks, there's been, you know, some restructuring of the organization, and it, it seems like one of the focuses of that restructuring is on player development, um, you know, prospect development, developing guys into, uh, you know, what you guys hope their upside to be. Do you get the sense that that's going to be a big focus of your job specifically in terms of, of developing guys? Um, I do. I think it's a big focus of, of the organization. Uh, I think, um, you know, Things aren't good enough right now. We're, we're not where we want to be, and we need to get better. And to get better, we're going to need um, some maybe some fresh legs and faces to get in there and, and do that. And uh, you know, we have some pretty we have some pretty good talent uh, that we can develop. And uh, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to get the most out of those guys uh, for them and for us. Gianna Han, you're on with John. Go ahead. Hi, John. Um, I was just curious, what previous experience do you have with hockey operations and how have your past life experiences led you to this role? Well, I mean, I, I've been in hockey my entire life. Um, when I got done playing, I, I took some time off and then uh, I did about uh, 10 years uh, working on the agent side of business of, of the hockey thing. And um, it, it, it taught me a lot. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, I know, you know, it's, it's good knowing some of these players from from an early age and uh you know I, I enjoyed that part of the business um but uh, being a part of a team and uh being involved in the team aspect of things it's uh it's as close as you can get to playing to me and um you know i really uh really enjoy being a part of the flyers uh so that opportunity to, to be with the flyers and be part of the hockey uh operation side um it's not playing but it's about as close as you're going to get at my age so uh i'm pretty thrilled about it Jordan Hall, you're on with John. Go ahead. Hey, John, thanks for doing this. Uh, I know you'll be fulfilling your duties still with Three Ice this summer. I was just wondering if that can help you prepare for your role with the Flyers, and like, what do you think fans can expect when, when it comes to Hershey and Philly? 
I think they're going to, what people should expect is a real exciting game. Um, you know, three A's has been tremendous. Uh, last year was a great success. Fans loved it. Um, if you haven't tuned in, uh, it's something worth checking out. Um, you know, last year, uh, being around the young guys, um, it just, it gives you a, a good perspective of how these guys think. Um, you know, obviously a hockey player today is a lot different than the mindset of a hockey player back when I played. Um, and that's why it's important, uh, you know, that I stayed in the game and in some aspect, uh, I'm able to grow a little bit and understand how the game has changed. And, um, you know, being around these guys, uh, you know, these young kids playing uh, three ice, uh, it, uh, it gives a good perspective of, of the game um, for me uh, as far as, uh, you know, what these kids are thinking and, and what goes through their mind. Um, and I, just the three ice experience has been tremendous. Uh, like I said, uh, it's a great game. Uh, we've had great success. People just love the excitement of the, the talent that we're able to showcase with these guys. So uh, I think, you know, if you get a chance uh, to go out to Hershey or, or stop in Philly on uh, August 12th to the finals, uh, you won't be disappointed. Charlie O'Connor, you're on with John. Go ahead. Hi, John. Um, obviously, you've had, you know, a, a pretty legendary career in Philadelphia. You played here for a long time. You know, Danny's a former flyer. Keith Jones, a former flyer. Even Patrick Sharp spent time with the organization. Why do you think it's it's so important, you know, for the Flyers to sort of bring back guys who, who play for the team? What, what do you think drives that? I think the biggest thing that drives that is the culture. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the former guys that have been here uh, and lived it understand the culture. Um, and I think um, that's one thing we've talked about is that uh, uh, we've gotten away from a little bit of that. And we want to get back to the, the flyer culture that we had uh, that was bringing um, some winning seasons. It did bring us cups, but we're going to get to that uh, next step. And that's what we want to do is get over that uh, that final threshold and get to the cup and, and win the cup. Um, but uh, it's, it seems like it's gone a little bit away from the culture that we had, uh, that excitement in the building, um, just that family feel that we had uh, back when the Flyers were we're one of the top teams in the NHL. And, uh, you know, that's what we want to get back uh, in a big way. Olivia Reiner, you're on with John. Go ahead. John, you mentioned that player development is going to be a big part of the organization's fo focus. What changes are you and the group looking to institute to the way the team approaches player development? Um, you know, like I said, we just kind of talked about getting started with things. But for me, I, I think it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, just having a personal um, knowledge of the kids, um, you know, having that uh, repertoire between kids so they can talk to you, uh, feel feel really comfortable about uh, asking you anything about their game. Um, you know, anything that's bothering them that, that they, they don't feel right about with their game or um, they don't understand what the coach or the message that they're trying to get. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that it's a, it's a real open, friendly atmosphere that uh, they feel really confident and, and feel secure talking to us about anything. And um, I think that will help a ton. And then obviously, you know, there's the knowledge that uh, the staff has uh, from our player development guys and Riley Armstrong and Nick Schultz and the rest of the crew, um, you know, these kids are going to learn a lot. And, um, you know, that's what the, the goal is. So we get the most out of them. You, wanna, you want them to be the best that they can be so that they can get the most out of their career. Follow up, Olivia? Yeah, you mentioned Riley Armstrong and Nick Schultz. How are you going to, you and, and Patrick and, and the rest of the front office going to function as a unit when it comes to communicating with Riley and Nick what your goals are? It's just, it's going to be an open communication. Uh, you know, I had a chance to talk with uh, with Riley and Nick and and uh, Sharpie uh, yesterday, and uh, we spent a lot of time together just talking about all kinds of things. Um, but, uh, you know, the one thing, it, it was, the conversation was easy, you could tell, and uh, the excitement was high, and um, it's going to be a lot of communication between all four of us, for sure. Uh, that's, uh, that's one thing that won't be lacking. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Adam Kimmelman, you're on with John, go ahead. Yeah, hi, John. Just sort of touching back on that player development start side a little bit. I know Riley and Nick are probably going to have more of a day-to-day -day hands-on, but from what you've seen, or is there guys or, or multiple guys that you're excited to get a closer look with to maybe do a little more hands-on with in, in your role as far as prospects the Flyers have common? Uh, yeah, and it's going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be one of those things that uh, it will just happen. I mean, I, I haven't had a chance to see everybody uh, yet, and I'm looking forward to that. 
um, but between uh, you know the rookie camp here and uh, in July, and then obviously uh, you know the camp uh, starting in, in September, uh, we'll get a good feel of what uh, what we have and what guys need a little bit more attention and what guys don't, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. And, and uh, it's just it's one of those things that I, I think it's uh, you know it's going to be a need basis for me. Uh, you see a kid that's struggling, you really want to. You don't want to lose him. You want to make sure he stays with us and uh, he doesn't get too frustrated or too uh, upset with himself and uh, try to get him in, back in the loop and, and keep that development going in an upward path. Jordan Hall, you're on with John. Go ahead. Hey, John, uh, you were in a first round pick and you might not have been like the most touted player, but you went on to have a great career. You won a cup, your Flyers Hall of Famer. Do you feel like your own personal growth as a player can help you and in- the way you deal with some of these kids in player development? Yeah, I mean, that's what you, you want to rely on your own experiences a lot. Um, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to play in a lot of different situations between international stuff, um, you know, world juniors and stuff, uh, you know, different levels as far as being a fourth liner, uh, being scratched to being, you know, on the first power play and being one of the guys, uh, a go-to guy in, in the lineup. So, um, you know, that's one of those things that, I think, um, you know, helps me when, when talking to a guy because, um, you know, I've been on all sides of the, of the game. Uh, I know what it's like to get scratched. I, I know what it's like to, you know, the coach benches you. Um, you know, those are things that you can kind of help these guys through. Um, you know, everybody has ups and downs through the year. There's ruts that everybody goes through and, uh, you know, just you, you try to guide them and, and help them uh, to get through those the best they can. Okay, we'll do two more. Gianna Hahn, you're on with John. Go ahead. Um, just going back to what you said earlier about how it really feels like everyone's on the same page. What is it about um, Keith and Danny's plan that convinces you that they're the right people and they have the right plan to turn this thing around and be something you want to be a part of? Um, just the way they've, they've approached it. Uh, you know, they talk about the, the culture, um, the, uh, the attitude, the feel that they want to have around the building. Uh, and then the product they want to put on the ice. I think um, the, the, everybody's focused on, on what we want to accomplish as far as what we want to see on the ice as a team. Um, and I think, um, you know, from everything that has been said in, in the direction that everything's going, um, it, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen hopefully sooner than later. Um, we all know it's not something that's going to happen overnight. Um, but I, I love that it's a competitive edge, too, is that, uh, you know, by, by no means does this rebuild mean that we're tanking or everything's over. Um, you know, we're going to be competitive. Uh, we're there to win every game, and, and that's the bottom line. And we're going to have that mindset from day one, and um, that's that's how we're we're approaching it. And last question, Charlie O'Connor, you're on with John. Go ahead. John, obviously the the organization's been restructured over the last few months. You have, you know, Jonesy as president of Hockey Ops, uh, Danny as the GM. But do you have an idea yet kind of where you fall in the hierarchy? I know you said you have the the longstanding relationship with with Keith, um, not so much with Danny. Will you mostly be interacting with with Keith versus Danny? Like where exactly are you going to fall in that in that structure? You know, I, I don't know if that's been determined yet. Uh, you know, it's been um, when I I've been with both of them, and uh, I'm assuming that it's going to be uh, you know equal contact with both, and uh, that's how I'm approaching it. Uh, I don't see uh, one or the other that uh, I'm going to report to more or less than the other. So, um, like I said, we're uh, approaching this as a a team, and um, you know that's how it's going to be. Uh, there's you know in my mind uh, those guys uh, are are equal as far as me reporting to them and what they need from me, uh, whatever they need from me, either one of those guys, uh, I'm there and ready to go. All right, John, thank you very much for your time this morning. Appreciate it guys. Looking forward to it.